ஹலோ சார் லைவ்ல இருக்கு ஹலோ சார் Can I start or we need to wait? sir can i start sir wait sir kalil sir hmm yes sir start panunga start panunga uh, okay okay hmm. uh, uh, good morning good morning all i am sir kalil mohammed ibrahim assistant professor st joseph college of engineering chennai first i welcome our patrons respected chairman dr b babamono baba monogaram sir our managing director mrs jessipriya ma'am director mr b sasheshay sir principal dr vatti saisagiri rao sir dean research dr b parvadavartini ma'am and our head of the department and convener dr v n nandini devi ma'am most importantly i welcome all the participants for the international webinar on nanotech applications a few words related to the webinar before start the today session majority of the institution and research industries focus on nanotechnology and its application in various extreme fields there are many conferences online webinars faculty development programs and workshops happening to improve the knowledge in nanotechnology this is one of the such programs which is going to educate you with the knowledge of usage of technology in electrical and electronic industries like diamond graphite fullerene carbon nanotubes are also considered as allotropic form of carbon which possesses excellent optical and electrical properties this webinar is also instruct how we improve the performance of batteries by using nano technologies we are going to learn the new generation of opto electronics materials in day one session and going to explain the high performance of nano materials in lithium ion batteries in day two session with this short note i would like to call upon dr s suresh to introduce the speaker thank you sir thank you thank you kalil sir uh, good morning dear participants and my dear friends hope you all are safe and fine for our international webinar on nanotech application i am here to welcome our resource person dr sarvanan adimurthy to deliver his intellectual talk on ultra nano crystalline diamond the new generation opto electronic material Dr Saravanan Adimurthy pursued his master degree and doctorate from National Taiwan University of Science and Technology and currently he is working as assistant professor in the department of electronics and computer engineering in the same university 
He has been awarded and honored by the Taiwan government for his outstanding research achievements such as uh, CTCT Best Research Scholar Award, Significant Youth of uh, National Taiwan University of uh, Science and Technology, uh, Performance Excellence Award and uh, prominently for a paper award from Willy Publishers. His research areas of interest are hybrid zinc oxide, carbon, nanodiamond synthesis, and nano device fabrications uh, such as uh, electron emitters, uh, sensors, and uh, photo detectors. He has published more than uh, 30 research articles in a highly standard uh, science index journals. And now, my friends, uh, please join me in welcoming Dr. Sarvanan Adimuthi to lead the session. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, all. And thanks for your interest and uh, thanks for the opportunity. I would like to sincerely thank the uh, HOD of St. Joseph College of Engineering and Professor Suresh for the efforts and the arrangement. And uh, before I begin my slides about the nano diamonds, I will give a brief introduction about the NTST, uh, Taiwan Tech, also about myself. So, um, let me share about my slides of the information. So, the topic I'm going to present and share about my research from about the ultra nano crystalline diamond materials, which is the best stable material so far in the carbon family. So, it's a new generation of the electronic material as well as. So, as I mentioned before, I begin my research outcomes and I will begin with my institute. So I'm working in National Taiwan Institute of Science and Technology. It's also called Taiwan Tech. So it's the uh, best and the first technical so you can institute. share your uh, presentation, sir. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. Ah, that's okay. Okay, so sorry for the technical. Oh, no, thank you. So, uh, as I mentioned before, I begin my talk. I would like to introduce about the NTST, National Taiwan Institute of Science and Technology, and about myself briefly before we begin. So, as I mentioned, NTST is the best and first technical institute in Taiwan. Uh, still, it's a uh, top five institute in Taiwan. It has like seven colleges, and, uh, 14 departments. I'm working in electrical engineering department, and uh, my, my department are both the electro optical engineering. So, it's the best institute, as I mentioned, it's a world ranking about uh, like subject ranking about 143, and it's a uh, ninth point rank in the old youngest university it starts like 13 years old institute it stays above 95 place so he's our president so professor leo dr leo he is the best president uh, so far and he had because he had a lots of his effort and lots of achievements so that's about NDST. and this is about me my name is saranan as i mentioned so I did my PhD as well as uh, my postdoctoral fellowship also in Taiwan Tech and UST. So now I'm working as an assistant professor. Last uh, three years I started from 2015. Uh, yes. So uh, this is about my research. So I do some uh, we synthesis the hybrid nanomaterials and also we fabricate the uh, devices like nano devices using the nano hybrid material. So uh, this is my publication, like uh, so far I have published 35 articles from 2014. So still I'm waiting for my best article. So still we are working on different yeah. papers. And I have published around two uh, Python and also some chapter book. So this is some awards I got for my research outcome. So I, why I got this much, I mean, uh, the paper found also because of the nano diamond. So that's why I want to give an in, introduction about the nano diamonds because most of the people think diamonds are expensive 
and uh, it's like only for the jewel icon or maybe some bio applications only right but excuse me it, sir yes sir Saran, sir. Uh, yes. Can you click that hide uh, in stop sharing next uh, to that? Uh, there is a hide, right? If you yes, think sir. that uh, your uh, presentation will not be hidden. Hello, hello, your partner. Okay. I click that. Sir. Click hide. Oh, I, I need to press hide. Uh, yeah, click, click that hide. Yes, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, every people think about the nano diamonds are like a nano crystal diamonds are expensive but we do this like within the laboratory so that's why maybe i want to give some introduction also detailed explanation about the diamonds what how we are using how we are preparing so with the literature review you may get some idea about the nano diamonds how it's prepared previously and so after we prepared what we do so we do for several applications like electron field emitters, microplasma devices, and uh, ultraviolet photo detector, gas sensor. As you know, as you uh, people are aware that uh, we always use uh, displays in everyday life, so we need very good display, right? And also photo detectors. So photo detector takes lots of place in our everyday life, like checking the UV rays in our mobile phones. Also these days we got the uh, medical issues like uh, virus issues so we can check uh, the the how much uh, effective of uv in our body so lots of military application also also satellite application with the uv photo detectors so as well as gas sensors gas sensors are also very important because it can use in the laboratory as well as uh, in the industrials because <coughs> if the hazardous gases like um, hydrogen leak in the atmosphere, we are in danger, human will be in danger, right? So we do this kind of application with the nano diamonds hybrid. Also, I will present these things today with you all. And also I will share some future research what we're going to do also with the nano diamond. So let's start with the literature review. So in this literature review, as I mentioned, we will, before I begin the main material like a nano crystalline ultra nano crystalline diamond so we need to know the the back history right so first we need to know the difference between the different carbon family because diamond under the carbon family so it's very important nano material and very useful nano material carbon so nano carbons nano materials with the like a graphene uh, graphite diamonds and amorphous carbon it's it's already best known material but as as we all know that graphene and carbon nanotubes well established material because these days we are using graphene everywhere like sensing also like our mobile phones also uh, biomedical application but diamond only less people using for this kind of application we are the one group one of the group in the world trying the diamond for the sensing application maybe people already success the nano diamond with the biomedical application but very few working on the sensor application so we are one of them you can say like 20 groups only working on the sensor so we are one of them so as we had seen the different kind of carbon why we interested on the nano diamonds it's because it's a best stability material so far recovered by the different researchers so as my experience i did lots of nano material synthesis like the zinc oxide carbon nanotube graphene but when you measure the diamond comparatively with this kind of semiconductor or carbon nano diamonds are the best stable material that's why uh, we are interested <coughs> on nano diamonds so you guys uh, maybe we already know the natural diamonds are expensive and they are very um, polished very well and they are very glitter and expensive as well but lab grown diamond also uh, exhibit the same property as the natural diamonds however comparatively the synthetic diamond <coughs> sorry so synthetic diamonds are inexpensive but they also give the same property as a natural crystal diamond so here's some property of explaining about the 
property of nano diamonds as i mentioned always i used to say stability because stability we need everywhere because without if we want the real time devices use for long time it, the device must be uh, shows very good stability right if uh, poor stability mean the waste of money waste of fabrication so everything waste that's why people always go for the good stability material so nano diamonds it's a very good stable material also biocompatibility is very good that's why if you, you google the nano diamond biosensor or drug delivery you can find lots of research article using nano diamonds published in nature or science or maybe like american chemical society so lots of uh, people interested on only bio application we are doing sensing and uh, maybe like uh, electron emission application because you can tune the nano diamonds very easily like uh, you want to n type or p type you can dope with the nitrogen you can get n type boron you can type p type so easily you can dope the other component on diamond so that you can have better stability also different properties and the conductivity is is very less in diamond but after you dope the nitrogen you can get the best conductivity better than even maybe graphene or other semiconductors that's why diamonds uh, it may be the promising material in future because it's very young material as i mentioned that's why i my title even if you find it's a future material i mentioned so we must know the difference between natural diamonds and uh, cvd diamond as i mentioned previously so the real diamond we know we we got from the we will get from the mind and then we will pop polish and we will get very shine glitter diamond right but <coughs> this diamond we will get the lab grown diamond we get the from two kind of method like a cvd method uh, chemical vapor deposition as we all know the chemical vapor deposition is the best technique to fabricate the high quality nano material we also do the cvd method to fabricate the lab grown diamond so that's the difference between synthetic and um, lab grown diamond mostly high pressure high temperature method it's also very old method for fabricating the nano diamond but you can get high quality crystals using hphd method but we are using cvd diamond because it's you can use less temperature to grow these diamonds and it's also very uh, good properties like electrical properties optoelectronic properties also the uh, thermal properties is good with the cvd diamonds that's why we are focusing on this topic and as you can see the figures here the natural crystal diamond as everybody know everybody maybe like to buy because it's uh, very shiny and it's a large size as well it has um, high impurities defects also it's a very high cost right very expensive but like hphd diamond it's a synthetic diamond can prepare as well like a fake uh, diamonds you can prepare using hphd it's a small size they will also post like um, uh, the natural diamond but the cost also less but what we do we need the nano material for a different application right so we do the cvd uh, like diamond so we use the cvd method to fabricate the and within a short time you can fabricate lots of uh, like maybe thousand uh, diamond wafers using the cvd technique that's why it's reduced cost also it will be compete with the natural crystal for the application like um, photo detector or electron because we can't use the natural crystal for every application because it's too expensive right so cvd diamonds also compete with the property of natural diamond that's why people prefer like me a researcher go for the polycrystalline diamond so the history of uh, diamond as i mentioned it's uh, been trying for a long time but here as you can see from 1995 they started to fabricate the nanocrystalline diamond using the argon 
uh, methane and hydrogen plasma inside the vacuum chamber and they will give some microplasma power and they can get the thin films like uh, nanocrystalline. So the research were going like from the Japan and United States, lots of effort. And finally they found like uh, in 2005, it's uh, they found ultra nanocrystalline diamond. So which is the one I'm going to present today. So using the MPCVD, microplasma CVD technique. So uh, please note that the technique called microplasma CVD. So this CVD setup, I will enhance, then I will use for my application. So this was found in 2005 uh, and then applied in lots of application. As you can see, some few application I listed here, like electron emitter, sensors, also transistor, MESFETs, and detector, UV detector. Still, they are using like uh, in the scanner or AFM, SEM, uh, tip they are using the nano diamonds that's why it will be very useful in future too so <clears throat> before we begin we need to know the the structure of diamond so basically diamond will have like a more sp3 orbital in their structure so when we dope with the nitrogen uh, or some other dopamine they will change the sp3 habit. like for example if we dope more nitrogen so the sp3 will share with the sp2 so we will have a more conducting in there uh, maybe in the structure so here uh, you can as you see here this is the SEM figure SEM figure scanning electron microscopy figure after we grow the cvd diamond so as you can see the crystal size are very big right so it's about a one micron to uh, like 100 nanometer more than scale and this is the diamond grown using hp high pressure high temperature diamond so mostly as i mentioned when we dope the n type uh, maybe nitrogen they will have more sp2 content than and sp3 content so this sp2 will increase the electrical conductivity of the diamond so uh, note here the sp2 play the big role in our studies so try to follow this otherwise because in future i will also talk about the sp2 only so sp2 help the electrical conductance of nano diamonds so that's our goal too we want to increase the sp2 content in our nano diamond to get the better conducting flims so before that uh, people were trying to get the nano diamonds with the better properties but they also got they only get them like a diamond like carbon like dlc so previously people uh, when they're trying to get the ultra nano crystalline or nano crystalline most of them they get like only dlc carbons like uh, with a uh, graphite sp2 and uh, sp3 diamond and they uh, stay at the center and H terminated diamonds, it looks like polymer like diamond. So the DLC property is high, has a high surface hardness and chemically safe and light absorbity also good and uh, high surface light also because you, we need to know the difference between DLC as we uh, as we compare the graphene or CNT before DLC also we must know the basic difference. So in diamond we will have more SP through and in graphite we'll have more sp2 so when we want to increase the conductivity of the diamond we want to have the graphite phase in the diamond that's our goal so how they grow the dlc first so dlc we can use uh, as i mentioned cvd technique here they use the plasma assist chemical vapor deposition method in here you can see the chamber is very big right the chamber the left side this is the cvd the plasma cvd look like the wafer the substrate will keep in the center of the chamber and then they will close this chamber and create a vacuum and then apply the working gases like uh, argon also acetylene for the carbon source then they will form the plasma like this uh, and on the substrate so after we uh, growth time uh, for maybe 60 minutes and with the working gases we can deposit the film on our substrate so this is the basic method they do the dlc's the same method 
we follow for the ultra nano crystalline diamond as you can see once you increase the external bias from 50 volt to 300 volt the hardness is increasing while increasing the <coughs> voltage of the uh, samples so here uh, try to please note the point here here they increase the bias voltage right so we will do the same mechanism for increasing the electrical conductivity in diamond flame for of our study so here they are using bias and then using the different gases so you have you have to note two point here one how they use bias and what is the purpose use bias so the purpose is increase the graphite content or sp2 content in our material that's our ultimate goal because it has a good electrical conductivity so the application of dlc's like uh, for the coating on watches and speak acoustic speakers also ball walls also the coating lenses so lots of application with the dlc so that's the difference between uh, diamond it's a uh, different from dlc but it's important to know the difference between diamond and dlc so so far i have give some idea about the diamond and difference between other diamonds right so this is the the cvd we are using to grow the diamond as you can see the plasma will ignite on the uh, substrate as you can see the microwave power will be feed through this side and substrate will be here and from this you can tune the microwave power and the, there will be quartz tube the, the structure the real structure will be looks like this and then we can form the, the we can fabricate the different kind of diamonds so for example in my, my research uh, are focusing on ultra nano crystalline diamond the one i'm presenting today also about ultra nano crystalline diamond but there are other diamonds also like a mcd micro crystalline diamond means from the name itself you can guess micro crystalline diamond nano crystalline diamond ultra nano crystalline diamond means reducing the size and their name also changes respectively so here you can see for the micro crystalline diamond the gases we use like methane and hydrogen so as you can guess here the the gas will be fit here right and they will create a different colored plasma so this is like pink color and we change here like we add the organ here to grow the diamond like you can see the difference this grind bigger this grind much smaller than this right and then here we remove the hydrogen because hydrogen the property of hydrogen is they will etch the graphite so I, we need a graphite for the better conductivity right so but here we try to remove the graphene and get the flint like very small grind so you can see the structure very very small right so that's called the ultra nano crystalline it's a, it's even smaller than nano crystalline that's why the name is so they found as a uncd and later on this flints or conductivity are not much uh, good also uh, not best so people dope with the nitrogen gas nitrogen content on the uncd so the, there is a, maybe the exciting things happen when they add the nitrogen with the uncd as you can see the structure of nine the grinds become a nano wires right so this is something uh, maybe interesting in the diamond between the diamond researcher because when they found this kind of this kind of uh, films it gives the very good property like uh, very good bio prop bio application properties and also electrical properties because the conductivity increases they can apply in the lots of field right like uh, uh, glucose sensor also capacitors also in the electron emitters also urea detection and uh, drug delivery so as i guess after uh, invention of this material uh, lots of people focus on this more than 500 to 1000 research article you can find even i published with this kind of material in more than 20 papers because of the property because of their 
enhanced properties. So let's start with the diamonds. This is the my main main research area. So uh, ultra nanocrystalline diamonds. So as I mentioned, simply the name is come from the size of the uh, grain. So diamond grain only like three to five nanometer with the grain boundaries between them. So you can see the diamond also have some graphite structure here, right? So this graphite helps the electrical conductivity of this material. So this is also grown with CVD method, microplasma CVD, as I mentioned previous slide. So this is the microplasma, the real CVD look like. As you can see from the quartz window, you can see the plasma color, right? Light, light green. So he is the inventor of UNC. You can say father of UNCD. Uh, from National Organ Laboratory, United States, uh, Professor Oranda Azello. So he formed the UNCD initially. Then later on, like different group like us, developed the different kind of uh, nano diamonds. So basically, uh, just remember the size is below five nanometer. That's why they called it ultra nano crystalline diamond. So the main uh, spice here is CH3 and you can we can use like argon and uh, methane as an active gas to prepare the diamond like this. So this is the CVD they use. The basic CVD looks like like they use hydrogen and uh, methane as a uh, active gases and then with the, some micro power and they grow the on the diamond on the substrate. Later on people a researcher developed this basic CVD as a MP CVD means microplasma CVD. So this microplasma CVD is enhanced then CVD. So what we do is we we do the MPE CVD means enhanced MP CVD. So we have developed like uh, we feed the external bias from the outside like we will apply anode cathode to the uh, CVD like as you can see substrate will be here and we applying cathode terminal here anode terminal at the top so what will happen when we apply the bias externally they will have the they will stimulate the electrical uh, electrical current right so that the conductivity increases automatically so this is the CVD look like and inside while growing the diamond fling the structure, the plasma structure looks like this. So this is the plasma position in the chamber. So the, the sample, the substrate will be uh, middle of the uh, device. So we will externally feed the anode uh, current that's called bias enhanced MP CVD. So original CVD will have only basic property. MP CVD externally applying maybe enhanced with the more power, also more uh, advanced. Then we developed the MPCVD as an enhanced MPCVD called MPECVD. That's why it's a good uh, method. We, we got published in different journal like American Chemical Society in 2014 using this method. And the summary of uh, UNCD is, as I mentioned, different size crystals, the name implies. So, NCD means we can have a methane, argon, and hydrogen. And UNCD, methane, only argon, no hydrogen here. When we remove the hydrogen, the conductivity of the sample, or conductivity of the diamond increases. Because hydrogen nature etch the graphite. So they will take the graphite while you having inside the plasma. So NUNCD means simply Nitrogen doped UNCD. Here you can see no orca. That's why different name also different property will have. So this is the CVD as I mentioned and the plasma looks like and how the, uh, the diamonds are growing. You can see through the schematic here. So the main function here when we oxidize or when we have a gas in diffusion inside our chamber, the CH4 bonding will break and then we will get C2 diamer like this. And finally, C2 diamer nucleation will form a sp3 diamond. So this is the method how we get the 
nano diamond wires you can see it's a needle like a diamond if you have a chance you can google easily n u n c d you will see maybe 100 paper using this diamond because this is is one of the promising material because of their properties so as as we give the plasma like a ch4 and a nitrogen the nucleation started and then they start to create a needle like diamond with the post treatment and with the, some advanced technique even you can get longer grain like this so here c2 diamond plus c and spices play the uh, effective role for fabricating this kind of nano wires so the plasma looks like this you can see it's very bright because of the nitrogen content inside the vacuum chamber so so far as i am explained lots of different type of diamonds like ncd mcd uncd and nitrogen nitrogen doped uncd right so why we do this only doing the nanomaterial is not good for the application side i mean we need some application right so that's why we focus on the different device fabrication like electron field emission so where we use electron field emission we use the electron field emission maybe in everyday our life like a display field emission display like traffic lights in taiwan they are using the field emission display as well and now they replace with the oleds is a different story but earlier they used the field emission display for the several application also vacuum amplifier x-ray sources also electron micro tips this is very important for this device because we we need to scan many things in our life right so like uh, electron micro tips are very useful like scanning electron also atomic microscopy they use electron micro tips so we do this application for nano diamond because nano diamonds are very good because of their conductivity as i mentioned this is the setup we use to measure the electron field emission so we will have a substrate holder and we will place the diamond and we will tune the anode so if you take every nano material they will have some turn on voltage right like if they will exhibit the voltage in certain points called turn on voltage we aim to have a low turn on voltage while we play as a electrical <coughs> field emission devices so then this is the field electron emission so this is fn plot so you can see here this is the, yeah, using the fn plot you can uh, plot these figures so different kind of diamond like mcd ncd uncd as i mentioned the structural changes and the name also changes right so as you can see different diamond like, giving the different turn on like you you should so try to notice here the applied electric field about 30 30 the electron emission started from 30 uh, vo uh, voltage right so how big you can notice and you can see the difference in our research so it's about 30 while they start the research but now we can get the turn on about 1.7 that is the best turn on for the nano diamonds i will report in the next slides what we got so but initially they get even turn on 30 volt so why we need low turn on volt low turn on volt means you can get power consumption also also you can save energy right that's why we don't need to go for more voltage so we can Reduce the voltage means your materials is strong enough to operate for the fast switching. Also, they will be have a low power usage. That's why we need a low turn on devices. That's why we our focus also to get low turn on. So it's th about 30 uh, turn on voltage. We are aiming to reduce the turn on voltage. So that's our goal. That was our goal. Now also I'm doing this kind of research. And other application is microplasma device. Microplasma device research also <coughs> very big because plasma applications, it's a very uh, interesting area. You can use for the biomedical application, like uh, uh, you can do also lots of uh, maybe uh, devices like uh, display devices and different uh, maybe the 
illumination devices. As you can see, this is the microplasma uh, result outcome using our diamond. So you can see the anode and cathode, and then you will apply some organ gas. With the, when anode and cathode react with the organ gas, they will ignite some light like plasma like this. That's our results also. We also use the nano diamond UNCD as a cathode and ITO as an anode and we apply some gases to ionize the our UNCD. So basically why it's good because they will have a large sigma coefficient. That's why this will have a lot of effect on microplasma devices. So another application, the main application we are doing also it's using the diamond is photo detector as you guys as you people know photo detector is very important device for our daily life as i mentioned earlier it's a, can monitor chemical environmental and biological also flame detection also optical communication and mostly for the environmental application uv photo detectors are very important so using this uh, nano diamonds we also trying to get the good photo detecting properties so we try to aim the 5s like good sensitivity good signal to noise ratio good selectivity good speed and high stability this 5s we are trying to get with the diamonds so another important application we are doing is gas sensor so gas sensor as i guess everybody aware of gas sensor so the, you can see the recent chart of gas sensor, how much the demand with the gas sensor uh, till 2023, the application. You can see the power management also like environment, consumer, medical, lots of application right, with the gas sensor. It's a very important device also. That's why we also doing some gas sensor EVs using nano diamonds. So you can see how the gas sensor are working. So usually when we have the substrate, they will, uh, without gas, they will just, in the clean air, they will only absorb the oxygen. So after we apply some dangerous gas like uh, hydrogen or ammonia, they will react with the gas and we will get the gas response using our uh, material. So this is the real device, gas sensor device. Maybe we use uh, in our uh, working place and industry, right? So this is the, how we calculate the gas response. From the response can calculate from the uh, gas resistance in the air and resistance in the gas. So their difference, we will calculate the response. So reducing gas and oxidizing gas, there is a different the response we can calculate. So basically, if our aim is to get the better performance of uh, percentage with the nano diamonds. That's our research. Also, we are only nano diamonds, sometimes not good. That's why we hybrid with the 1D zinc oxide structure to get the better properties. So as, as we are from science background, so zinc oxide has, is a very old material, but still we can get lots of effect. even this year i got uh, already two research article with zinc oxide even though it's very old but there is a lots of room to improve the property of zinc oxide that's why we are also working on zinc oxide hybrid with the nano diamond so zinc oxide can prepare different types like pld pulsar laser depression cvd ecd method but we do the hydrothermal method. Why? It's because very, very inexpensive. You can measure in your, you can fabricate the sample even in a, a small area. I mean, you don't need like a very equipped lab. It's very easy <coughs> because we'll have only like heater like this and then because of solutions and with some zinc salt. After heating 90 degrees Celsius, you can get the, zinc oxide nano rocks very easily and then after etching you can get the zinc oxide nano tip as you see here the figure if you keep <coughs> five to eight hours with the 50 degrees celsius they will etch self etching 
very easily by themselves. That's the advantage. The quality is not so good compared to CVD method, but this is inexpensive. So these are some application of zinc oxide. Uh, as uh, we know that they are very good for the sensing application. So we also doing with we adding the zinc oxide with the UNCD for the different application. This is some of my seniors published some paper using nano diamonds and zinc oxide. This was the pioneer paper. Then we follow the uh, this research and we develop lots of effects. So after you can see at the dark and the, at the UV, you can see the changes of uh, nano diamond zinc oxide hybrid. So this is about the literature review. Now I will move on to uh, my my result. So so far. The conclusion, or I mean, the from the literature review, I would like to summarize the points. Like our goal is to improve the basic property of nano diamonds. Like uh, we want to increase the conductivity. Means we want to increase the sp2 in our nano diamonds. Means graphite content in nano diamond. Second thing, we want to increase the uh, we want to lower the turn on voltage. Means uh, we want to get low turn on voltage and third thing we want to get the good sensing response for our gas sensor also uv photo detector that's our goal so you can see from our my data first i did the electron emitter as you can as i explained earlier so electron emitter i do with the bias enhanced so as i mentioned earlier we will feed the external bias to to <coughs> To the sample from the we will apply anode and cathode to the mp cvd cvd and then we get the uh, enhanced uncd films as you can see the schematic when no bias the grinds of diamonds still bigger but when we apply the bias the diamonds grind becomes smaller this becomes smaller so the electron transportation in between the grinds become faster that's why you can see the graphite also increased the green color also increased very high when we use the bias and you can see this is the electron emission figure if you notice earlier i report about the earlier people report our 30 volt of turn on but you can see with the bias we reach up to 4.2 uh, turn on voltage so Try to remember why we want to decrease because it has a good fast switching ratio. Also, it can give you low consumption, low power devices, right? So that's why our ultimate goal is to get the low turn on voltages like this. So for example, with no bias, you can see it's reached up to 20 volt turn on, give you 20 and best is 10 volt with no bias. But with the bias we can get 4.2 volt <coughs> that's because of as i mentioned when we use bias they have ignite the graphite phase in our material graphite means sp2 phase is increased and we get the good flames like this so this is the tm image you can see the white highlighted is about the graphite in a, in the nano diamonds when we use as a bias so here we do the some changes like as I in the previous slide I show you only diamond right here we do the difference like here using UNCD <coughs> here we add the another layer called NCD so here UNCD and here NCD means ultra nano crystalline and nano crystalline here we applied the bias at this level and we what we do the invention thing is we we usually use only silicon substrate but here <coughs> we add the gold layer means au layer to increase the performance as i mentioned our ultimate goal is to get a low turn on voltage right so here you can see again we decrease the turn on volt about 2.6 when we use the gold layer and because of when we there is a two thing happening here for example we use the gold layer it can give you best electrical conductivity and using bias also give you good conductivity that's why we get 
the turn on about 2.6 volt so as you see the red figure so this is you can see the stability also better right and then next i as i give the introduction about the nitrogen uncd diamonds so it's also can say nano wires we turn our research to nitrogen doped diamond because we already got some effective data with diamonds so we want to know what is the difference in nitrogen uncd also we check the electron emission the electron emission is not better than hybrid diamond but you can see it's about 4.06 and we get the different structure like nano grains nano wire and with the uh, like a core shell structure of graphite and nano diamond so this is some unique structure that's why we could publish this paper in the applied physics letter one of the good journal in the physics <coughs> then we move to the uh, hybrid diamond so now we do the hybrid diamond with both uh, plasma technique i mean with the bias technique so <coughs> here we conclude all the bias as you can see uncd with no bias uncd with my mi minus 200 volt bias and hybrid diamond with high bias so far i have only increased about minus 200 volt but here we give high bias like 400 volt so the turn on volt even better like 1.7 it's better than many carbon and semiconductor material it's because the when we give high bias you can see the nano graphite the blue color increased very fast also amorphous carbon decreased because Amorphous carbon means they will have less conductivity when we compare with the nano graphite. So nano graphite increased because of the high bias. So this is the uh, transmission uh, TM structure. You can see the graphite face, also the diamond grains. So this is the SEM structure with no bias and bias, also hybrid bias. So this is about the conclusion of electron field emitter as we can see different semiconductor material you can see and the best is about our nano diamonds hybrid nano diamonds and this is you can see this there uh, cnt is best but the quality of cnt uh, stability of cnt is very less only 250 minutes it can sustain but our diamond can sustain like a two 2600 minutes as a device that's the advantage of nano diamond as i mentioned is the best stable material and later we hybrid with the zinc oxide and uh, uncd as you see the final uh, device looks like this and as i mentioned different sized grinds and we fabricate device like this and we check the turn on also applying uv we check the with the UV illumination, what happened? The electron emission is about 2.9. So we had we got published in Chemistry European Journal, and this paper got the best paper award because this nobody tried this one. Also, the data is very very interesting among the researcher. That's why this journal from the Wiley publisher we got the award for this paper. So. Now I will move on to the microplasma devices. As I mentioned, microplasma devices used for the biomedical application, also display devices for the HP, HD display. Here we use the UNCD, our diamond as a cathode, ITO as an anode, and then we make homemade device. This is homemade, like a man, we make by ourselves. And then we apply some gases like argon, and within a voltage similar like electron emission, they will emit the current as you can see. So once you have the low voltage, the brightness is very small. When you increase the voltage, the brightness become higher, right? So this is the bias sample. You can see the difference within like 400 volt, the brightness is very good compared with the other. So we conclude it can use for the good uh, display devices so also we check the nitrogen uncd nano wires for the 
display application you can see the display images very bright right so from when we increase the voltage from 320 to 510 volt they also they increase very fast but <coughs> using the bias you can see within 320 volt it can ignite the plasma but other sample there is no plasma so that's the application of uh, nuncd using the microplasma devices and now i will move to the photo detectors so as i mentioned photo detectors is very important <coughs> there are lots of photo detector available like a visible photo detectors and ir photo detectors we do the uv photo detectors so as you can see we use the we not only use the UN diamond we hybrid with the zinc oxide because uncd uh, only uncd not good for the uv application because we apply the 365 volt nanometer sorry 365 nanometer light source but uncd nano diamonds the light source about 250 nanometers but the exact uv is 365 so zinc oxide is good for the 365 nanometer uh, uv illumination so what we do we hybrid the zinc oxide and uncd and check the performance as you can see the the current as if you notice here the current is increasing when we hybrid with the diamond so it's minus 3 so comparatively better than other materials right and you can see the comparison table the photo response the how we calculate the photo response photo response when we apply the photo i mean the light on the sample like <coughs> like this one is the i photo without light this one is i dark so we will divide i photo divided by i dark and we get the photo response like this and this is the uh, scm figure of zinc oxide and this is the nano diamond nano wire how it looks like and this is the nano tubes and after we hybrid with the zinc oxide and nano diamond they etch more well that's we prove with the pl spectra as you can see the oxygen vacancy is smaller <coughs> in the zinc oxide with the n u n c d so it's because of the quality of the this hybridization so we conclude this and then later we try the before we only try with the uncd zinc oxide but now we add external like foreign material called graphene so graphene so this graphene again increase the switch uh, photo response as you can see uh, one when we use only zinc oxide it can give you only 1000 Three hundred about, but while adding diamond, it's increased to eight thousand. While adding graphene, it's increased again to nineteen thousand. So that's why we we use the hybridization for our uh, photo detectors. So this is recently we published in Advanced Material and Interfaces, two thousand nineteen, as you as you see here. So this is in the here. we use the semi grown diamond so far we you can see the flints are continuous are thin flint here we do the semi grown diamond means they can act like a very good active sites also very good substrate and then we we grow the zinc nano tubes on the diamond and then we add the graphene flakes with this diamond then finally we fabricate the device like this so as you can see <coughs> the stability of zinc nano tube is become reducing when you increase the time but when you have a graphene zinc nano tube and uncd the stability is very good right comparatively if you notice this one and uh, graphene znt when we have a diamond you can see very good stability that's our goal to increase the stability of the materials and then we introduce the new material called uh, thin film metallic glass thin film metallic glass one of the uh, maybe the interesting and promising material among the nano material maybe it will be we have very good feature one of our colleague already got patent with the uh, iphone apple for their display so maybe it will be feature material as well 
So what we do is we hybrid the zinc and thin film metallic glass. And again, we increase the photo response. <coughs> As you can see, when you have the thin film metallic glass, the photo response even reach up to like a 40, more than uh, 100,000, right? So that's the advantage. Why I want to introduce the metallic glass? Because later we add the metallic glass and diamond for our sensors. So this is the gas sensor. This is the gas sensor. I think the first gas sensor ever reported using nano diamond. We got uh, published in 2018 using the nano diamond is published in applied surface science. I think it's the number one journal in the <coughs> surface science. So we have measured the different diamond with some post treatment of argon and hydrogen gas for five minutes, 10 minutes and 15 minutes. And we got the response only small, like 6.5, but it's the first pioneer research. And that's why it got published by this journal. <coughs> and then we used the hybrid like a metallic glass with the zinc oxide, as you can see, we caught first metallic glass and then diamond on the metallic glass. And we grow the zinc oxide nano, nano wires, as you can see the structure here. And we check the gas response. You can see the gas response reach up to 60.5. As if you notice this one, only 6.5, but this one 60.5. <coughs> so 60.5 is kind of a big achievement for our group. And we got also published this in 2019. So it's because they're using metallic glass and diamond with the zinc oxide. But only zinc oxide, you can see, is only 16. But when I add metallic glass and diamond, it's reached up to 60. So that's the advantage of these two nanomaterials. Then finally, we did the, it's a very new paper. So we do <coughs> hybridization with zinc oxide, MOS2 on the UNCD, as you can see the TM structure. So this is the diamond and this, the green color is MOS2 and blue color is about zinc oxide. Here also we check the gas response performance. So this, you can get even very small PPM, uh, hydrogen of 100 PPM. You can get the very good response. <coughs> Why we have only zinc oxide, only 7.2. But after I add the diamond, I'm also that 50. So that's the use of diamond material we get. So that's about uh, my presentation. Maybe in future, we will have some supercapacitor and vacuum transistor, also photo detector at the deep UV. So thanks for your time and thanks for your interest. And if you are a student, some student maybe can apply for the start internship. In future, not this year because this year we got lots of trouble. Maybe next year you can contact me for the internship. So, thank you for your time. Uh, that's all about my presentation today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, fine, sir. Now we can, uh, can you answer some of the questions, sir? I'll post one by one. Okay. So the maximum temperature this will be an extent. What is the frequency they can affect and why they that my subject will be like why not it So uh, as I mentioned, this temperature <coughs> about uh, it can sustain about 1800 because the very hardest material in diamond as we know. And <coughs> We grow using only 700 degrees Celsius because the high temperature we don't prefer. So we grow the nano diamonds with only low temperature, but it can sustain more than two, uh, like 1,800 degrees Celsius. And why we don't uh, apply with the UV? Only why we are applying with UV light because we are only uh, high so far. As I mentioned, this is very young material, right? It only is formed in 2005, but it's only for electron emission application or maybe bio biosensor application. <laughs> but initially, 
trying with this infrared, maybe in future we may try with the infrared uh, light detection. Because why we choose UV light? It's because of zinc oxide. Zinc oxide, like uh, it's very old and it's uh, uh, maybe utilized as a UV photo detector more than 30 years, but still there is a lots of place to increase the performance of zinc oxide. So we add the diamond with the zinc oxide and we want to increase the performance of zinc oxide. That's why we introduce the diamond. As I mentioned, the exact UV is 365 nanometer. But the diamond wavelength is 260 nanometer. That's why we want to focus on it. Next question, sir. And the quality sense for making girls to be explained. Okay, thank you. Uh, like HP, HP is uh, there, the researcher working for the like NV Center. If you know about the NV Center, Nitrogen Vacancy Center, it's a very good for the biomedical, like imaging application or bioimaging, like MRI scan images. They are using HP, HP uh, diamonds, but we are using. CVD diamond for the sensing application like a UV detector, gas detector, and electronometer. Comparatively, natural diamonds is, is the best, but the HPHT will compete the in some point HPHT will compete. But CVD diamond is it's 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 come from also the diamond because we buy the natural diamond and we get the we do some nucleation and we, we, we get the thin things done. That's the difference. The answer is Excuse. the competing oh, is they are only competing, not the best. Next question. Particle lines in iron based nanocarbon. It's possible to test correct in the recent theme, not only iron based protocol. Okay, thank you for your question. Mostly uh, it's not related uh, about our research, but usually we use nano diamond powder. We, we are basically like thin film, uh, like thin film researcher. I'm not familiar with the uh, nano ion based nano Yes. Fine. Sir. Hello. 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 Can can the quality of the drafting affect its optical? Drop? Yes. Sure. Because. Uh, there are lots of ways to get the graphene right. For example, we use the CVD method and people use the hydrothermal method also. Some other technique from maybe the sonication or lots of method to fabricate the graphene. Maybe uh, the optical properties also will affect the, depends on the preparation, means quality. So the best known method is CVD method for the graphene preparation. So the optical properties also vary depends on the <coughs> depends on the preparation method. Right. Next question. Could you tell me the approx cost in for diamond requirement for nanoparticle preparation? Okay, thank you. So basically we buy the powder like fine nanometer nano diamond powder. So that's uh, not very expensive, like only 200, uh, we buy from Sigma rate only. We buy the UNC, basically the diamond powder, and then we nucleate uh, that our substrate with the diamond first. So the cost, it depends on the quality. Mostly the one, I, I don't know exactly, but uh, because the, the people here, the lab assistants, they will buy the things. So basically, it's about only uh, two hundred dollars something like from Sigma Thank you, sir. Uh, probably the last question, sir. What is the basic difference between nanoparticle and alpha nanoparticle? Yeah, thank you for the question. So as I mentioned, the difference is only the size. As I mentioned, basically for our research. We do the different kind of MCD means uh, microcrystalline because the size is one micron and uh, nanocrystalline the size is only 100 nanometer. Ultra nanocrystalline is only 5 nanometer to 3 nanometer. 
So the difference is because the size, when you decrease the size and it's become a tiny device, like small, small particle, right? For example, like a 2D material, MOS2 or WS2, or like um, some other 2D material like uh, MOS2, what they do, they do, they buy the bulk material and then they will nucleate long time, like 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours. If you nucleate 10 hours, you get the large particle. If you nucleate 10, 15 hours, you get maybe medium particle. If you nucleate maybe 20 hours, you get very tiny particle, right? So that's different because of you do the effect. Even now, the same preparation, if you apply some external voltage while you are nucleating, you can reduce the particle itself, right? So that's because when you're decreasing the size, the effect also increases. So that's we do from the microcrystalline to ultra nano crystalline. Because when we decrease the size, the conductivity increases, also the property increases very well. Yes, that's hope you I answered the questions, yes. You're fine, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It's time for a word of thanks. Uh, Khalil. Uh, Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, the essence of all, the essence of all beautiful authors, uh, gratitude. Gratitude is the way of appreciation. Hence, I would like to thank our respected chairman, Dr. B. Babu Manavaran, sir. Our managing director, Mrs. S. Desipriya, ma'am. Director, Mr. B. Sasi Sayekar, sir. Principal, Dr. Vati Saisagiri, sir. Dean Research, uh, Dr. B. Baruda Vartani, ma'am. And our head of the department, uh, and convener, Dr. V. N. Nandini Devi, ma'am. Okay, most importantly, I would like to extend a special thanks to our invited speaker, Dr. Saravanan Adimurti, who readily accepted our invitation despite of his uh, busy schedule. The way he explained that the given topic is exemplary. Thank you, sir. Also, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to all the participants for their interest to attend the webinar and made this their grand success. Once again, I thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, fine, sir. So, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We will see you in the future in the Doctor, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Yes. Hope to see you in the Now you can wind up. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks. The participant, uh, you can kindly uh, fill up the feedback link. Sir, have you checked that uh, feedback link? Someone is posting that uh, the feedback link is previous uh, previous one feedback link. Yeah, I'm checking now simultaneously. Professor, can you check that uh, feedback link? Yeah. Sir, no, no, feedback link check on the other. I already responded in the hour. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a
participant if you are uh, not able to fill the feedback link with the previous link uh, you can uh, post the feedback link now that means uh, you can uh, fill the feedback link using the link posted now Yeah, again, I'm posting the feedback links. Uh, participants, if you fail to submit the feedback form, now you can submit. Yeah, I hope you had a good session. Uh, I end this session now. Thank you so much.